This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. I spent the last couple of weeks trying to get this uh, version of the positive variable power supply working and found it initially it did work for about 90 seconds and then died. So I'm kind of stuck. And what I decided to do is since I had prepared two of these boards, one of the boards was for a standalone 0 to 20 volt power supply. The other one was for the positive leg of a dual tracking power supply. And I was going to use the second board and put this thing together from scratch. But this time, I wanted to make sure that every single component, including the transistors, were completely tested. Now, I remember it from about three years back, an article in a German electronics website that somebody had created a multi-component tester, a tester that had three leads. You could take any component that had two or three leads, connect it to this device, and the device could identify the component and provide tested values. It was a multi-component thingamajiggy tester. It could not only identify the component connected to it, it could identify the leads and which lead was connected to which socket in the device. And I decided I needed that. And I wondered if anyone had come up with a commercial version of this. So I did some looking around and I found on Amazon Yusu GM328 component tester, which was very similar to that that I had uh, encountered three years ago. And moreover, this device was being shipped by Amazon, meaning you didn't have to wait three weeks for something to come in from China. So I ordered it, and I decided I was going to wait for this thing to come and then test every component of the second board before I constructed it. So I'm going to be testing every bleeping component that goes into this second board, and we'll get that underway. Sticking some leads in here. There are a number of things I don't like about this particular implementation, uh, not the least of which is it doesn't have a case, but I can make a case for this in more ways than one, but I don't like using this zero insertion force IC socket as a means of connecting to the device. I guess it's better than some alternatives, but I prefer alligator clips, so I've put some alligator clips in here. Now testing capacitors. An electrolytic capacitor, I want to try to keep the polarity correct. The left number one connection is negative. So this comes up with the fact that it's a capacitor that's connected to the one and two clips and gives you the voltage loss and the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. The first I saw of this type of device was in an article in a German electronics website. And then later on, I saw reference to the same gadget, but much more advanced in a EEV blog forum. And then somewhat thereafter, I saw a reference to it in an Adafruit forum by someone who had converted the AVR code to Arduino. And that's, that had me interested. I was kind of wanting to make my own version of this thing and would have preferred to do so. But in this case, I decided I, I just can't wait. I need it now. Maybe build one later that is better somehow. I'd have to look at the code. This kind of thing is, is, is more of a programming project than it is an electronics project. We're looking at 0 0.01 microfarad capacitors. You have the V-loss on the small capacitors, but not the equivalent resistance. Diode, which I had determined the polarity of with a multimeter, and this shows the diagram, and the diodes were appropriately labeled. It also shows the forward voltage of the diode and the equivalent capacitance of the diode. And the second diode, again correctly labeled.
Finally, the third diode. This is one of my concerns, that I had one of these diodes connected incorrectly, and apparently not. They were properly labeled and properly connected. The forward voltage is 6.55, is that? I didn't catch it. 6.56. Got another resistor here. It should be 53, and it came up with 53.9. Now the transistors. This is what I'm really interested in. Be careful about not shorting out these alligator clips. Get some stable connection and yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. According to this, this configuration of this transistor, and I've got it properly oriented, is ECB, and this is not what I thought it was. Well, there's one source of a problem. <laughs> Uh, let me just uh, check the... Uh-huh, that's okay. EBC, yes. I want to make sure I got these down and I don't screw it up again. But this is this was okay. This is what I thought it was. EBC. It also gives you the beta of the transistor and the forward collector base voltage. And now the uh, 3906, 2 and 3906. For components like this, the zero insertion force connector is fine. EBC, forward voltage of 0 0.711 is interesting. PNP is accurate. I'm not quite sure what the ICEs are. Now, very clearly, this device has allowed me to identify another problem here, and probably this, the, the source, the primary source of the problem, in that I had originally designed the circuit boards for this TO220 version of the 2N3055. This is an MJE3055 transistor in TO220 package. And as you can see, its configuration is base collector emitter, BCE. I thought I had these transistors, but when I discovered I didn't, I had a, a handful of also MJE3055s, but in a different package. And I assumed that the pinout would be the same. Now, isn't that a rational assumption, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? I mean, I mean really. Uh, why would they change the pinout just because they put it in a different package? I, I just could, I can't conceive of that and couldn't conceive of that, and maybe I should have conceived of it. Because according to this multi-device tester, this is not the pinout of the transistor at hand. I did, after much searching, find this pinout which is ECB. The TO220 is BCE. The TO126, 127 is ECB, where pins 1 and 3 are reversed. And I'll bet this is the source of all of my woes, <laughs> or at least most of them. Well, what I need to do here is to change the pinouts to reflect the actual TO-127 package that I'm dealing with. In addition to spreading out the pins on left and right, if you look down at this where the pins are 1, 2, 3 going left to right, 
Pin 1 has to have the connections of pin 3, and pin 3 has to have the connections of pin 1. <laughs> and to do that, I'm going to put a, an eyelet connector in place with the positive rail and change the jumper so that it goes from pin 1 to the positive rail because the leftmost pin 1 is E and not B as indicated there. Next change, I got to make a connection between the pin 3 and the collector of the 2907 transistor through a relatively direct change. Also, that green jumper is no longer required. I can use uh, copper tape on the copper side of the board to make a direct connection. I don't need a jumper because the jumper isn't jumping anything. Now I'm going to use copper tape with a conductive adhesive to, to make some corrections here. I'm going to concentrate first on that uh, blue jumper. And I need a donut to terminate that blue jumper. And I'm going to have to drill a hole for it. Let's put that donut in place. I'm using a burnishing tool to tamp that thing down. I wind up using solder to reinforce the electrical connections. Now I'm going to use a strip to implement the connection between what is pin 1 from the diagram and put that in place. And this is copper tape with a conductive adhesive. I already have some of that in place to correct the previous broken trace during etching. Now I need to drill a hole for the reposition jumper. And then there is one connection that needs to be broken. So let me get around milling tool. I'm going to cut the connections between at both ends of that trace. That trace is no longer needed because the configuration of the transistor has changed. I want to make sure the connection is broken, but I don't want to dig too much into the epoxy fiberglass substrate. Now, having broken that connection, now I can put some copper tape connecting the two donuts, which will replace one of the jumpers, as indicated. In this video, I started constructing the second card first by using a component tester to test every component including the transistors during these tests i discovered a conceptual error in the mje 3055 to 127 version i then made corrections to the printed circuit to reflect the accurate pinout of that transistor in the next video i'm going to be constructing this second card and testing it if you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until next time, good day.